let me introduce Mike Adamson, Grand Puba <laughs> of AEA, the new title, the proper, obviously, President and CEO. Uh, Mike, uh, the first question has to be is, how is the AEA community? Are, are we healthy? Are we getting healthier? Or are we just wasting our time? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're healthy. We're healthy. We're getting healthier, too. I think you, you put it into perspective with the last couple of years. It's been uh, quite a ride, for sure, um, for us as an association and for all of our members, our shops, and our manufacturers. Um, so based on the last two years, we're getting healthier, but we're healthy. Um, it's strong here. Business is good. We have our challenges we'll talk about, but um, yeah, uh, good momentum going into what feels like normal again. One of the things I want to bring up, and I'm actually going to lead in with this if you don't mind. Uh, we get a lot of calls at Aero News. Well, I want to be a pilot. I want to do this. I want to do that. And there are people out there who are looking to go back to work, uh, have been booted out of regular jobs and so forth, for which there was not a whole lot of training. But the, now there's opportunities to go out and build a life for themselves. And one of the things we recommend is uh, maintenance technician or avionics technician, because one, uh, it's not a long period of training time overall. And let's face it, the money's good, the lifestyle's great, because you know that stuff is done on schedule and so forth. Uh, what advice, what, what do you have to say to people who are looking at this as a potential career or a life change for that matter? Uh, excellent question on the life change piece because we do training at our headquarters and we get the career changer um, that maybe comes from another technical field, um, engineering, that sort of thing that, that brings a natural ability or a skill set um, that, that fits well with what we do. Uh, so we focus on that. Um, for, the, for the interested individual that's maybe a little bit younger, coming out of college, coming out of high school, anybody that has any interest in, in computers, technology, um, this is the field for you. Because you combine cool cool computers with cool airplanes, um, there's honestly no better, no better career field to get into. Um, it's exciting, there's new stuff coming out every year. Uh, we're the, you know, we kind of call ourselves the consumer electronics show for, for aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where all the neat stuff's launched and we feel like that's, that, that happens here. Um, so ultimately, you'll find your way to this show. You'll get to be a part of this enormous event um, where everybody in the industry meets, and we're all family, as you know. Um, so well, That's one of the things I've noticed about AEA. I mean, let's face it, we've got three trade shows in a row, but this is the one we really look forward to because of the fact that these are people we know. That's right. There's a lot of relationships here, a lot of almost familial relationships, and it's amazing how tight this community is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been a part of it for you know, 22 plus years myself. Um, so it's family to me for sure. Um, but you know, we're, we're a small slice of the aviation pie, but um, we're big in heart. And uh, you know, last year when we did our show in June, we didn't get our international attendees and we've got some of them back this year, which we're thrilled to see. And that's when you really feel the reach of this organization and that, and that family feel, um, because it's been a two or three years since we've seen some of them. And it's, you know, it's a family reunion. Um, so we're, we're just ecstatic to, to, to have him back and be a part and, of it. And Trig brought the scotch bottle, so we're ready. We're, yeah. we're, we're ready to go. They know, they know how to do it. <laughs> there you go. What are the major challenges this industry is going to be facing in a transition from uh, pandemic woes and post-pandemic into an uncertain economy and a regulatory environment which is seeing an awful lot of change? especially with the FAA, now you see it, now you don't, yeah, administrators. Right. Yeah. Uh, man, you've got your work cut out for you. We do. I, you know, it, it's one thing to, to, to deal with that, you know, pre-pandemic. Um, it's a moving target. They're, they're progressing a little better than they did in, in years past. And we've got a fantastic relationship and we're, we're well educated in that um, regard with our staff and, and the work that Rick does. Um, but the challenges are many and it goes beyond regulations. Um, it's, it's emerging technologies, emerging, emerging markets um, with different types of aircraft, crowding the airspace. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't think we can go to this, this time slot without talking about supply chain issues <laughs> and, and the human resource issue, right? You beat me to the question, did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I just, it's, You're it's no inevitable. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, there, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's just um, the climate. You, you, and then you, you get through all of that and you're talking about some, some conflict in Europe that's impacting, you know, a pretty good sized market yeah. for, for folks that, that dealt 
in those regions, um, aircraft, avionics, and the like. So there's all kinds of pressures. The, well, uh, that brings up an interesting question. Um, this market seems ready to go. Uh, we, the interesting thing about the pandemic is that it did present opportunities for airplanes and crews and companies that were down to go out and get a panel done, get this done, that done, and that was one thing. Uh, not so much apparently overseas, but some. Uh, what is the difference right now in the potential recovery and going forward modes for both the international as well as the national market? I mean, it, it comes down to supply chain, because you know, as you, you attend all the shows as well, and we see it, um, the money's out there. Yeah. Um, there is money on the sidelines ready to invest in these airplanes. Um, and, and, and the exchange of the, 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 the market for airplanes um, being bought and sold presents a really good opportunity for our shops as well. So the money's out there. Um, supply chain's an issue. I don't know that that's a near-term fix. We could be through the end of the year on that. Mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing from that, though, the inflationary pressures on the, on the price of these products and what it costs to just get these components in these in these boxes um, is is driving prices for the manufacturers. But well, pricing not all overall being, is insane right now. Have right. you watched the used market, used aircraft market, GA? Exactly. I mean, when you're getting fifty thousand dollars for a tired one fifty, right. and God help you when you get into the light twins or the uh, the light uh, turbines, wow. Yeah. It's gone up. Scarcity drives those prices, right? And and so we're going to see that in, in our used avionics space, our new avionics space. Um, we've got manufacturers that are, that are having to focus on um, products that have been on the shelf for years that they've already poured all their R&D money into, um, having to go back and re-engineer those products uh, just to get new, new components in them so they can ship them. Um, so that's impacting the future new product development. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we'll see that over the course of the next year. Um, so they're innovative, as you know. I mean, every time we come here, it's something new. Um, and they'll do a great job with it, but they are challenged, and uh, it's putting some strains on our shops. Unfortunately, the shops are, you know, have backlogs that yeah. that, that, that go for for miles. Um, and if they had the qualified people and some of the components, they'd be having their best years. Well, we kind of we're kind of all scared that once the 2020 mandate was done, that we were going to be twiddling our thumbs right. for a long time, and we're just sitting there going, "Okay, but I'm busy till December of 23." I remember that question: What happens after the mandate? Yeah. And you know, autopilots were the were the hot thing, mm -hmm. um, still are, and um, you know, I, I, there's no concern about post mandate. It's it's concern about post pandemic now. Have you had a chance at all to get briefed uh, with the new guidance at FAA, the new administrator or acting oh, administrator for okay. the time being? Um, <laughs> yesterday, as the news came out, um, I was sharing information with Rick, and um, we do have some fami familiarity. Um, I don't personally, but Rick does, and so okay. we'll be preparing for that and you know, bracing ourselves for that that uh, um, new leadership. But you know, like like anything, we've got a great relationship with the administration um, through all levels, mm -hmm. and so that'll carry through to that as well. Um, I am sorry to see uh, Mr. Dixon go. Um, you know, as we all talked about, he was a, uh, a great leader for the organization and, um, uh, you know, understand why he's going and we'll welcome the new one in and get to work. Well, it's obvious that Steve Dixon knew how aviation worked yeah. and that is irreplaceable in many cases. So we shall see how the next generation of leadership, whether they be acting in temporary or wind up being acting in long term as yeah. some of the past case scenarios have, uh, have been and see what happens to it from there on out. The overall attitude of the industry remains positive and that's great, but what is it gonna take at this point, especially with the burgeoning unmanned, or I should say uncrewed now, right. uh, and autonomous uh, airframes that are coming out, are we really prepared to embrace that? Well, from a technology standpoint, from, a, from an eagerness for a new market standpoint, we're ready to embrace anything, Yeah. right? Um, but crowded skies, you know, um, interference with, you know, the traditional airplane. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think there's going to be concerns there. I think the technology will get us to that point, but um, I understand the careful approach. Uh, I do. And I think um, I think it's something that will, will enable our innovators here to create products that keep everybody safe. Um, and it's just going to be more work for our, for our integrators. So I'm excited about that. But. Well, the energy behind that part of the community is huge. Yeah. 
uh, just as important, the money is bigger, greater. Um, the biggest question is what the, is going to be the breakthrough that makes it practical. Yeah. And we're seeing some signs of where that might come from, but no actual knowledge as to when that will actually take place. We're seeing, you know, oh yeah, we're going to be taking, you know, air taxi passengers in 2025, and you know, we're kind of going, yeah, maybe see you then. But there seems to be uh, tremendous opportunities now with certain aspects of the community, especially as we start doing package delivery and the like. Right. So I, I would imagine that's got to be an area that you folks are looking at with great interest. Of course, you know, we, we know our manufacturers are, are involved in the development of, you know, the cockpits for those feature aircraft. And I think you're going to see the, the logical path would be something on the EMS side, something on the, on the package delivery, um, certainly in the uncrewed space, right? You're, before you start putting um, people's on, people on you know, uncrewed airplanes, I think you've got to take baby steps. And um, even if those timelines are ambitious, they're going to happen in the near future. And so you've got to pay attention to it and be ready for it. Uh, we look forward to it as an opportunity to, to really turn on the next generation mm -hmm. um, to, to the career fields that, that, that are exciting now with traditional aircraft, right, that they're used to seeing. Um, but I think it'll help us tremendously. So it can't come soon enough, but I understand the process with the, regulata the regulations and um, just the market being ready. And the infrastructure as well. Yeah. That's a whole another piece of it. S slight segue to something I wanted to bring up here real quick. Uh, the job that you folks do is immense. And the natural assumption is you've got to have, oh, 200, 250 people backing you up at AEA <laughs> headquarters. Um, Describe the organization a little bit. I think people will be stunned by what you do with what you have and how effective the organization has been. I appreciate that question because, I, you know, I could I could spend another half an hour talking about my tremendous staff. Um, we're a staff of nine, so we have seven in our headquarters facility in Kansas City. It's Lee Summit, a suburb of Kansas City, and we have two remote, um, and that's the extent of. We do have uh, some folks that we that we use on council. Um, and contract for different things from, from regulatory and, and legal, but, but the official staff is nine. And um, it's been that way for, for a while. And they put on this tremendous show and attend um, other shows and then of course do our series in the fall with all of our different connect meetings. And they're just, you know, they're all experienced, knowledgeable, hardworking, wear many hats, just like every, every trade association has. I'm just so proud of our team. Um, to pull this off with the challenges we've faced in the last three years, it's unbelievable. Um, and it, you're right, it's, it's something not a lot of people know or understand. Um, we've got a tremendous group of volunteers that, that I think come pretty excited to be a part of the show. I, th I wonder what they, when they leave every year, if, they, yeah. <laughs> if they'll- if they uh, drag themselves Yeah, the exactly, they're voluntold to do it, but um, just tremendous help from everybody that's, that's part of it. And yeah, I do agree, we make, we make this look like it's put on by a lot a lot bigger organization. You really do. Um, I mean, you know us and, and how we are with our opinions. If we didn't think uh, kindly or highly of you, we would say so, and you'd be tossing me out. This has happened once or twice. Uh, but seriously, you've been incredibly effective, not just based on the size of this or that or whatever, but the way you have worked with the industry, the way you have set up partnerships with aspect of the industry, and then on top of that, the way you worked out leadership change between your board, your advisory, some of your training people, and so forth, is really a, uh, a model on how it should be done. Well, thank you. Um, so the big question is, can you teach that to the rest of the industry before <laughs> we get our act together? Well, I mean, good you know, grief. There, look, we, we attend other shows, and, and everybody does a great job. There's, there's not one we don't go to where we... We learn something. Um, there's shows that are much larger in size and, and do things on a scale that you know we probably couldn't do. Um, we just want to make sure that the people that spend the money uh, to come here uh, take a week or so away from their business, um, which is which could be you know substantial for that small business. Um, that it's, it provides value to them, and so uh, we're going to continue to do it. I don't know that there's any secret to it other than just hard work and uh, you know great deal of customer service. Interesting. Of this transition that we've taken from, I mean, we were all hard charging a couple of years ago. Uh, I remember it was only a couple of weeks before the AA convention that was planned at the time for Nashville. 
and then you know the bottom dropped out from everything. But things were really pumping. We yeah. had strong economy, strong leadership, so to speak, at least in the business aspect of things. Um, tweets notwithstanding, <laughs> uh, and things seemed to be really quite remarkable at the time. We were running a real boom. Now we've gotten through all this. What are the lessons that this industry needs to learn from such a sudden shift in fortunes? And how does that apply to what we need to do from here on out? Yeah, that's a really good one, Jim. I, there's many, right? I think, um, you know, I think preparing yourself for those, you know, financially, preparing yourself for those, for those moments, you know, having your reserves, um, having your team ready for um, switching, pivoting, going digital, um, going virtual, which we're all good at now, right? We've honed those skills. Uh, but being ready at a moment's notice to reinvent yourself and, and to be flexible uh, with that concept. Um, we were hard charging. We were going to have a record show in, in Nashville and that rug got pulled out from under us. And, it hurt. Yeah, and you know, we're taking a look at ourselves. And are, are we in the show business anymore? Yeah. I mean, that's a real question. And I'm sure these, these places that host those events are thinking the same thing. And they took it really, really hard for a couple of years. Um, you know, we, we did a pivot to virtual and that seemed to work. We moved some things online and our members responded well to that. Um, but this industry in particular, um, not show business, but aviation, thrives on the personal touch. We are, we are human interaction types and um, if we don't have a way to meet and convene and do face to face like this, uh, we've got real issues, I think. Um, I'm not sure that we'll face anything worse than we just did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we'll be ready for it, but remember what we did and be prepared for it because it could happen very easily in the future. Um, so. What technologies right now within the avionics community are the hot spots? What's, what's looking to be particularly promising? You mentioned before uh, autopilots are driving an awful lot of interest. And I'm seeing some interesting trending, especially with GoGo uh, com completing a 5G network yeah. that <laughs> doesn't hurt anybody anybody or anything in, in aviation and so forth and so on. What are the things that are exciting you right now or at least getting your attention? Yeah, GoGo will appreciate you saying that, by the way. Clearing that air. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, connectivity is obvious. That, that's cutting edge. It's unbelievable what goes on in the cockpit and the demand that that, that, that passenger has and that VIP has for, for data. It's unreal. Um, I think that's, there's, there's a lot there Go back to the cockpit, and you know, we talked about being the, the group that powers safer and more efficient flight. Everything's focused on that. The way they, these companies can innovate and produce things that we can't even fathom, right? We talked about it last time, I think, was you know, some of the spinoffs from these, um, these, these cockpit workload management technologies. I think you'll see that um, federate in the cockpit. It'll be interesting to see how that that takes hold. Um, there's some leaders in that space, as you know, and uh, I'm sure they have more up their sleeve, but uh, it goes- and a, and a whole lot of wannabes. Sure, yeah. you know, um, but that imitation is the sincerest form, right? And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's how some of these startup companies incubate, even within our space. Mm -hmm. um, they chase somebody that's got a technology and they maybe find a different way to do it, a different market, and, and it, it grows up from there. Um, the sky's the limit. You know, AI, there's, there's all kinds of things that we could be seeing as, a, as an outcome of uncrewed systems and, and advanced air mobility as well. It's, uh, the only thing we can guess at on um, things like that is it's going to be interesting. That's it. Always is. Because God knows where it goes from there. Um, the other area, look, uh, there are some announcements coming up that are going to be making a lot of hay about electronic control systems for next generation power plants. And we're getting to a point now where we control every aspect, or the computer and the uh, management system and panel can control every aspect of the engine and prop. And this is what, of course, uh, makes Autoland capability um, a given now, as well as other capabilities up and down the line. But it seems to me now that with that control, we've got AI looking at how we monitor the condition, and oh yeah, you've got an impending engine problem or something like that. Um, where's the excitement in that area coming from? Who, who are the players there? 
Well, the excitement is the electronics community is getting more of the airplane, right? I mean, we're taking over, in other words. I mean, yeah. it's you know, it's we're about to have our HAL moment, you know, just I, I mean, <laughs> Dave, close the pod bay doors. Right. It's yeah. it's uh, truly because the things that were mechanical before are have a wire attached to them now yeah. and have some control to it or some indication to it that that absolutely the folks on this floor are going to be managing and, and um, servicing and installing. That's truly exciting. It's it's just um, the innovation in these airplanes. Um, the introduction of you know, different propulsion systems are absolutely going to cross over into our space. And we, you know, as a, as a board, we talked about how we can embrace that organizationally. You mm -hmm. know, do we have all those players in our space now? Do we know who all those people are? And can we put our arms around them? And you're going to see us do that um, as this evolves. Well, that, be, that gets into another segue here, because you mentioned all the training that you're doing at AEAHQ. How hard is it keeping up with the rapid upgrade in technologies? I assume that's one of the things, I mean, I know you're doing a lot of basics that's and right. so forth, and that's great, but there has to be this tremendous need for uh, being able to do deal with the next generation systems as they change almost on a daily basis. Right, you know, and the difficult part with that is the folks that are engineering it aren't the type that are going to turn right around and teach a class on it. Oops. Right, so, so you've, you're, to say on this cutting edge, you're always going to trail it because, because of that. The people that are engineering it aren't going to turn around and, and you know, develop an entire curriculum for everybody to learn it. So we'll be a little bit behind on that, but it's something we're constantly looking at with our classroom training at the office, at the headquarters, and even when we come to these shows is, what can we bring to them that they haven't seen before? And um, finding the right people to teach that to somebody else that's willing to share their knowledge is a challenge. Um, but it will produce exciting training, and it's it's going to be required. It's going to be mandatory for these folks to to come in and work on these systems. Um, How do you keep up with that, though? Holy smokes! I, I come to this show and I pay, <laughs> I pay close attention. <laughs> you know, I walk around and I learn every day. But yeah, I mean, it's you have to. You you, you got to talk to the different OEMs and see what they're what they're working on, and and then yeah, try and identify people that can help us. You know, build those curriculums. Yeah. Interesting. If you were able to send a wish list right now to the uh, upcoming acting FAA administrator and his assistants and so forth, what's the wish list look like from AEA for the, F the FAA of today? I think to some degree, um, maintain the level of communication that you currently have with the folks in leadership at the positions we work with. Like I said, we have an outstanding relationship, so we want to continue that. We don't need wholesale changes. Um, the industry is always going to want more. We know that. Mm -hmm. um, you have to ask for that and continue to push them to stay on the cutting edge of technologies. But I think um, um, allowing us to progress um, with the folks that we've developed these relationships with, I think will be key. Because um, it is instrumental in, in all the things that we get to do. We, there are struggles individually with different organizations, different members at shops, manufacturers, whatnot. We can address those w without too much issue. If we can maintain that, we'll be okay. Um, Rick will expand on his wish list for sure. Um, and expand, he, he and more, expand, and expand. He can get more granular on that, <laughs> and I trust him with that. But um, you know, I think it really does come down to this collaborative relationship, um, and that's been key to. I think you know, it used to be so so focused on enforcement, and now it's in, it's it's focused on um, partnership and development. And we both know we're entering spaces that we haven't been before. And so working together is, is key. We had uh, some conversations with our friends at SpaceX recently, and they are just combing the world for talent. But the biggest thing that they're talking to people about is that people are really not training for the future right now. Yeah. It's just not enough. So how does AEA train for a future that also includes um, aircraft and spacecraft and things that we think are going to be pivotal in the next four or five years. Uh, we've got a close relationship with the SpaceX folks and some of the Blue Origin folks, and if they do half the stuff they get to do, this industry is going to be massive. I mean, there are already hundreds of thousands of people involved, and it's going to get a whole lot bigger. Right. You guys ready for space? <laughs> of course. Of course mm -hmm. we are. 
uh, we have, we, we're trying to find people to do uh, the work today. So I, it's, a, it's an absolute challenge. Um, introducing aerospace at an earlier age, which, which everybody's doing. There, there's efforts from all the organizations, um, and, and really strong efforts to do that. Um, we've got to get better at that ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, and will. Um, but, but getting it into the classroom at a younger age, getting them turned on to the possibilities. Space was a thing when I was, when I was younger. Um, and it, for the last, what, 20, 30 years, it hasn't been so much of a thing. This privatized you know, SpaceX has really reinvigorated it, in my opinion. Yeah. And then, of course, what, you know, with the space travel in the last year or so, um, I think turned a lot of people onto it. With that, we'll see, uh, we'll see it reinvigorate in the classroom, for sure. And uh, hopefully, that will align with the availability of training that, that will get them ready. But they're, they're just going to have a license to learn. Because when you come into this industry and it's this complex uh, and this fascinating, you're still going to have a lot of training and, and education um, to, to really be an efficient technician. In the five minutes we have remaining before you become a pumpkin here, um, what does the business aviation community and general aviation community need to know about what you do here that they don't really know? What message do you have to them, to the folks who are actually operating the equipment and frankly trusting their yeah. buns to, you know, uh, Joe Avionics Tech and Joe Avionics Manufacturer? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. I, we tried to make that part of our opening yesterday with our video and, and, and my introduction. You know, this community, um, I, the, in, the innovators and the integrators, um, the installers, the manufacturers, are the most tireless in their training and pursuit of knowledge. Um, this show is about that. You know, there's a trade show floor, which is great, where they get to see all the new products. Um, the rest of it is surrounded by training classes, and they consume it like no other industry I've ever seen. Um, and, and it's paramount. You, you know, to work on an airplane, you have to be, you know, per the FAA, capable of performing your assigned task. How do you demonstrate that? By training. And so they come here and get that. And um, it's not just to check a box. Some industries, you know, the CEUs are check a box. That's not the case here. No. They're hungry for knowledge. It makes them more efficient, creates more profit, makes them safer. Um, you know, this, this network of, of professionals is truly the, the most trained, I think, of any industry I can compare them to. And we're really proud of that, especially to be a big part of it. Outstanding, good to hear. Um, if you had advice for your members overall about the next 12, 24 months, and seeing that through based on what you've seen the last few days, what's come up to this point, some most recent announcements in the political scene and everything else, what does AEA and, and the boss have to say to them about their future? Persevere, persevere. We've, we've seen challenges like we've never seen. We, we've had, you know, 9-11, we've had, you know, 08, 09 with, with the uh, housing market and the banks. Um, here we are with a different challenge and we've persevered. You know, we're essential um, as we were described and we had one of our best years because of it. Um, so now we're facing supply issues, um, we're facing workforce issues, uh, but, but I said, as I said in the opening, this is a resilient industry and um, we're creative and we'll find ways through the next year, um, and they'll find ways to do business. The association will be there to help them, and uh, if we persevere, we'll be in good shape. Um, there's, as I said, there's plenty of money on the sidelines ready to upgrade aircraft, and uh, we'll take advantage of that when the parts align with, with the work. AEA 23 will meet where? Be in Orlando in late yes. April. Yeah. Backyard. We're gonna let We're gonna let Sun and Fun go first this, next year. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> You are now my new best friend. All right. Uh, that, that, that'll be a whole lot easier. But uh, holy smokes, the, the uh, transition this year between doing this, going home for a day and a half, going to Sun and Fun, got a couple of days, then day UVSI. And at that point, I think we all collapse and frankly don't answer the phone for about a week. So we shall see. Well deserved. <sighs> we shall see. All righty, folks, we are live from the 65th Annual AEA Convention and Trade Show in New Orleans.
News Network's coverage of the 65th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from New Orleans, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Vantage is Avidine's family of all new flight display systems for retrofit and forward fit applications. Initial certification will be Vantage 12, retrofit glass for legacy Cirrus aircraft. Vantage 12 brings advanced capabilities and adds new life to Cirrus aircraft, including large 12-inch diagonal hybrid touchscreen displays, 3D synthetic vision, and split-screen capabilities. Additional Vantage programs will be announced in the future.